It's a quest for knowledge, books as your swords, yeah. your sheer desire and will as your shield to protect you from getting discouraged as you charge in, just angry faced, war painted up, just wearing your rubber gloves, ready to experiment. First of all, it's really important that we get the best minds into every single profession. If there's a population that we're not recruiting from, we are missing out on the inventiveness and the intelligence of that whole segment of the population. In the social science research in general, Native Americans are very under-researched. We have very little understanding about the kind of day-to-day -day experiences of this population. How many times do you see a Native American on TV, in the news? Not much, because we're the last in line for everything to even get attention. All students come to the university with big dreams. And yet when a student disappears from my class and I don't know why, I'm always kind of left to wonder why. And that was happening too much with our Native American students. Based on our collaboration examining Native American students in the nursing program at Montana State University, in 2009 we submitted and received a grant from the Gender and Science and Engineering component of the National Science Foundation. According to the latest 2010 U.S. Census, there are about 5.2 million Native Americans in the United States. This is about 1.7 percent of the U.S. population. The majority of Native Americans are in the western half of the United States, so there are a number of states that have high proportions of Native Americans in their population. Montana, for instance, has a population of Native Americans of about 7%, and Arizona is around 5% Native American. With these figures, you would expect the institutions of higher learning in these states to have similar proportions of Native American students. Certainly, Montana and Arizona have some of the highest numbers of Native Americans enrolled at the university level, However, the reality is that the representation at the college level, no matter what the major, is still far below than the 5-7% to 7 we'd expect. Case in point, at Montana State University in Bozeman, the population of Native American students is only about 3%. And in looking at the fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or the so-called STEM disciplines, the representation of Native American students is even lower. There are fewer than 50 incoming Native American students at MSU Bozeman who declare a STEM major each year. One of the things that's quite shocking is the high number of these students that are not making satisfactory academic progress from the very beginning. They may not be failing out, but they are most definitely not making progress at the rate that they would want to be making in order to complete their degree in four or even five years. As of summer 2012, approximately 200 students participated in our study. Two-thirds of those are from Montana State University, and the remaining third are those from Northern Arizona University. Approximately 70% are women, which reflects the current general U.S. population trend where more women than men are working on a college degree. There are 565 federally recognized tribal nations. The largest represented groups among the MSU students were Blackfeet, 15% of the MSU participants, or Crow, which was at about 14%. At Northern Arizona University, the great majority of students in our study were Navajo, representing about 73% of NAU participants. Students from MSU reported 30 different tribal affiliations, and students from NAU reported 9 different tribal affiliations. Needless to say, this is not a homogeneous group, especially considering the subcultures that exist within each nation. Despite the various levels of diversity within Native American populations, there is a common theme of a communal orientation that underlies most tribal nation communities. Men and women alike who are Native American generally endorse an interdependent or communal connection between their sense of self, their family, their culture, their land, and their spirituality. Indeed, the very notion of family for most Native Americans is much broader than people realize. Our data and other research shows that this notion of communal orientation is very important to understanding Native American student experiences. Our project consisted of three major phases. 
Starting in fall 2010, we began surveying Native American students as they entered the four-year university setting at MSU or NAU. In the first phase, Native American students were given a survey and asked to answer a series of questions about their background, as well as questions regarding their conceptions of science, their goals, values, and aspirations. One of the things that we're looking at with these students is surveying them about their sense of traditionalism. And when I talk about traditionalism, we're looking at different types of um, markers for how much they feel connected to um, the culture that they've grown up in, the culture of their parents, the culture of their ancestors. For the second phase, we contacted the STEM majors at the start of their second semester. We asked them to complete another survey about their experiences in college so far and to participate in an in-depth, one-on-one interview. Because this, this population is so understudied, it's very difficult to know what kind of questions you can put in the survey. And so it's important from the research perspective to be able to have the interviews to draw from when we're doing something that's so uh, exploratory. It's also very important for, from the perspective of the respondents to really give sort of honor to the tribal tradition of storytelling, to allow them to have the voice to give the narratives to their own story. The third phase involves interviewing these same students one year later and following their student progress in their coursework and major by examining their transcripts. Transcripts are examined only with each student's express written permission. Looking at the academic progress for these students is really quite remarkable. We see some very interesting patterns. One of the things that we notice right away is that the GPA over time drops off pretty quickly. 60% of the students in our study were not making satisfactory academic progress in their first semester. Together, these sources of data provide a more rich, complex picture of the experience of Native American students as they navigate their first year at MSU or NAU. There are Native American students that are successful in college. What is it that makes these students successful? The relationship between U.S. science and engineering and the, the Native American tribes have, has been contentious throughout the last few uh, centuries even. Well, there's gravity and that just keeps me down every day. <laughs> um, let's see, what else is there? Physics, I uh, can't jump. It's hard to imagine because we're so seeped in science and engineering culture in the United States, but, but those professions have their own professional cultures and they're very resonant and they're very salient. It's very difficult to see those cultures when we take them for granted. So the first thing that pops into your mind when I say scientist. It's like a dude in a white lab coat, <laughs> like writing stuff. And then there's like a bunch of glass tubes and flasks everywhere filled with different kind of chemicals. And created an uh, elaborate apparatus and then just a bunch of stuff like that. I always picture a guy for some reason. Uh, a guy. I wear a lab coat. Well, Does it stand like this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the white lab coat, like doing tests and everything. The white lab coat in the lab and does studies. Works with chemicals, works in a lab, uh, working on experiments. I'm mixing chemicals. Explosions. Brains, like names on test tubes and whatnot. Sometimes beards. Usually they're pretty pale because they don't get how much. They spend all day in the lab. Looking through microscopes, writing papers. That's what a scientist looks like to me, I guess. You know, the usual. Einstein. Albert Einstein. It's the face of scientists. That's a really disturbing kind of connection between science and engineering and these tribal communities. Having these students have this training to go and be scientists and engineers and maybe go back to their communities and be the voice. What I am struck with every time I do the interviews is how amazing these students are. A lot of them come from backgrounds where they weren't given the kinds of opportunities that many of the students that, that they are, that are their peers in their classes were. I come from one of the most poverty-stricken reservations in America, and I've, I've gone through them all. I've thought of them all. And I'd probably say Fort Peck Indian Reservation is one of the hardest, behind Rosebud and Pine Ridge. I didn't want to drink like my father. I didn't want to end up in prison like my father. So when I looked at science, I really started getting interested. 
Not only are they dealing with these kinds of structural and monetary kinds of circumstances, but just cultural pressures of, of coming into a situation that they're not particularly familiar with. Mm -hmm. On top of all that is the pressure of living up to the expectations that they put on themselves, mm -hmm. or they're put on by them, by their families, to really succeed. It's just inspiring for me to become one of the first Native Americans to do this or to do that. Not for my name, but for the Native American community as a whole. One of the students I was talking to told me that he wanted to be an engineer because he wanted to show other Native American students that they could be engineers too. Nice. And so that's amazing, but it's also a tremendous amount of pressure that that student puts on himself. We need to make sure that faculty kind of are aware of those cultural traditions and are willing to be flexible about helping those students work still be able to stay successful in college and yet be able to honor their own culture. We can have the first Native American president. It's time for us to start thinking we can do anything with our lives, even being a scientist. That's what's inspiring to me. I think you need like um, just the desire to have, like to become a scientist really, to be a scientist. Because you don't just wake up one day, man, I'm gonna be a scientist today. No, that doesn't happen. I don't know, I guess everybody in their own right can be a scientist if you just want to learn something and figure out the answer, I guess that makes you a scientist. We still have a lot of things we need to do as Native Americans. We've been persecuted for years and years and years. It's time for us to stop thinking in the victim mentality and start thinking in the victor mentality. Why not become one of the big Native American scientists? Why not? I can't say I will be, but I'll try my best. So that's just inspiring to me. We want to be just like Good. Taylor. We all just want to go. Because we're making fun. Are we good? We're good.